never tell you. Sasha! <laughs> Cease! There is more than one way to scare a cat. Week on goofing off. We take a look at Nintendo Land for the Wii U. Our movie snobs gives their verdict on Oz the Great and Powerful. And we give our review of the new Tomb Raider game. Welcome to another episode of Goofing Off. I'm Danny Mars. And I'm Zach Kuzmik. Wait, Zach, why are you here? Shouldn't you be off reviewing movies or something? No, I'm not going back to Jamie. I can't take the verbal abuse anymore. Well, it's okay, buddy. You're safe up here with me. And this review of Nintendo Land will cheer you up. Nintendo Land is essentially a collection of in-depth mini-games based on Nintendo's different intellectual properties. There are 12 total attractions in Nintendo Land. The Legend of Zelda Battle Quest, where players become archers or swordsmen to take down evil. Pikmin Adventure, where you traverse a harsh jungle environment, sometimes on a time limit. Metroid Blast, where players blast alien weak points from the sky and on ground patrol. Mario Chase, which is essentially a timed game of tag where Mario is always it. Luigi's Ghost Mansion, where ghost hunters must use their flashlights to track a ghost before it attacks them. Animal Crossing Sweet Day, where players must collect candy within their costumes while avoiding gatekeepers. Yoshi's Fruit Cart, a puzzle game where players draw a path for Yoshi to snack on fruit, then exit through the doorway. Octopus Dance is a deceptively simple but rigorously tough rhythm-based game. Donkey Kong Crash Course is a massive obstacle course with very little room for error. Takamaru's Ninja Castle is all about defeating little cardboard ninjas armed with several throwing stars. Captain Falcon's Twister Race is a fast-paced obstacle course on a very strict time limit. And finally, Balloon Trip Breeze, where players create gentle breezes to keep themselves aloft. Not only is this game beautiful, but it's also loaded with massive amounts of content. Nintendo Land gets four and a half goofs out of five. Theme parks always make me happy. It just makes me sad that I can't be happy like that with Jamie. She can be a bit of a psycho. And speaking of psychos... Zach, stop it. We've had a long talk with Kyle about this. Those corny jokes just aren't gonna fly up here. Sorry, I just look up to Kyle. He's so good looking and all the women want to date him forever and he also didn't write this. Wait a minute, can someone look over this script? I think Kyle's on the prompter. Anyways, let's take a look at our review of Psychonauts. Psychonauts is a platform video game created by Tim Schafer, developed by Double Fine Productions, and published by Majesco. Psychonauts follows Raz, a young boy gifted with psychic abilities who runs away from the circus to try to sneak into a summer camp for those with similar powers in order to become a Psychonaut. He finds that there is a sinister plot occurring at the camp that only he can stop. The game centers on a widely strange and imaginative minds of various characters that Raz enters as a psychodet in order to help them overcome their fears or memories of their past so as to gain their help and progress in the game. The story is set in Whispering Rock Psychic Summer Camp, a remote U.S. government training facility under the disguise of a children's summer camp. While at the camp, you get trained by several of the best Psychonauts, the cool and calculating Sasha Nine, the fun-loving Mia Vodello, war-scarred Coach Oleander, and the age Ford Cruller, the leader of the Psychonauts. You can do pretty neat things like set things on fire with your mind and shoot side blasts at tons of enemies. 
the boss battles all feel different, interesting, and pretty fun. You don't need to think that deeply about how to defeat a boss, but the game won't exactly just tell you how to beat them. Speaking of bosses, it seems like my ex-girlfriend found a new job after destroying my life. I can't believe she keeps turning up in all these games that I play. Get out of my games, Linda! I mean, look at this. Even the kids mentioned her right in the beginning. You don't got nothing to worry about. Except for that giant monster in the lake I was telling you about. I just didn't realize it until I ran into her later in the game. And what name is that noble lake creature? Linda. Also, fun fact, this game is only $10 on Steam, which is a complete steal. Overall, this game is the Psy Blast. It's got a great story, funny and interesting dialogue, and it's only $10. But you really have to pay attention to figure out where to go, and the locations are really hard to find and can be quite irritating. We give this game 4 out of 5 goofs. Now that Kyle's finally off the teleprompter, I'm free to say whatever I want. Hold up, you didn't hurt him, did you? He bruises like a banana. No, Danny, I just set an elaborate trail of chocolates leading out of the control room and around campus. Needless to say, he'll be busy for a while. All right, well, uh, while our viewers check out this episode of Game on a Budget, I'll go grab Kyle before he gets too close to traffic. Hi, I'm Casey Church, this is Games on a Budget, and this My Little Pony t-shirt's the closest thing you're getting me to wearing a cat sweater on this show. Deal with it, Tyler. Anyway, the cave! That's me, the cave. Yes, yes, I'm a talking cave. D -d 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 Don't laugh. The cave is a puzzle platformer where out of a group of different characters you take three through a journey throughout a magical talking cave where they try to find something that they're looking for and to be punished for something they've done. The game is centered around solving puzzles. Some one character can solve out all on their own, while others require all three to work together using everyone's special abilities, like using the knight's invincibility to distract enemies so another character can sneak up behind them. Each character has their own themed level, which makes the replayability high. You can pick up the cave now on Steam for as low as $15. And for the record, I know this is the third Sega game in a row I've reviewed in as many episodes, but don't worry, it's not because I'm a Sega fanboy or anything. Nope, not at all. This has been Games on a Budget. Game on. <laughs> the suspense was killing someone. It just wasn't me. Worst first date ever. Why did Casey mention cat shirts? Oh. We forgot about the theme. Oops. How did I let this happen? This show is falling apart. Wait a minute, is that nil-disguised insult at me because I'm hosting this episode? No, Zach, don't get so touchy. Well, let's take a break so we can figure this out. Like what you see here on Goofing Off? Then follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, or check out our website. Crazy for Instagram? Send us a picture of you watching Goofing Off and we'll put you in the next show. Retweet us and you might want a chance to be on Goofing Off. Thank <laughs> you.